So do you have a photographic memory? Yeah, 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 yeah. I can, I can remember anything. He does. He remembers like the oddest, weirdest fucking dates. It blows my mind all the time. So as far as like the nineteen, Aliens. the nineteen ninety two, you making the serial killer? That you do you know? You know oh, I can yeah, vividly. Yeah, you know exact dates was, and times. As if we just walked away from it right now and took a break and sat in the van and talked. <laughs> yeah. Does does it like seem we're in some sort of time machine across a uh, intergalactic uh, portal? Does this seem like yesterday, or does it? Because she and I were just talking about this rolling up here that like time seems f- so fleeting. It goes by so quickly. Super quick. Like what? It's all one long day, to me. Is that how it legitimately yeah, seems? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously, since the moment that I pulled in here, and uh, that was August fourteenth, nineteen eighty-eight, at uh, the corner of Gower and, um, or no, a uh, corner of Bronson and Sunset. Where did you pull in from? Uh, I drove all the way from Buffalo, New York. Okay, so you're all oh, Buffalo, New York, yeah. Yeah. The, the very snowy town of Buffalo. Yep, I got off at the Sunset Exit and uh, looped around and pulled into the gas station. Called up my friends and said, where are you, dudes? They're like, we're down at Tower Records, man, come down. What did you have with you, just a car? Like, just a car and a girl and some underwear. So n- n- no instruments, no like no nothing. I I drove three thousand miles across the United States to be on um a TV show called the Gong Show. Ah, okay, I know the Gong Show. Yeah, they I, I was reading the paper in, in Buffalo looking for a job because I didn't want to be a bum. I said I gotta get I gotta do something with my life. And I'm looking through the paper and it said auditions for the Gong Show. I was like, oh my god, this is it. So I called them up and I said I have this crappy band, Green Jello. People throw food at me. Were you doing it? In bu- were you doing it in Buffalo? Oh yeah, I okay. had started by Ben in uh, high school, 1981. I was uh, 17 years old, January uh, 19th, uh, 1981. So you knew people out here they, they were going to be your band, kind of like you just came out and you did the satellite thing. Um, like the- I knew a couple people that yeah. were here, and um, they moved to Hollywood to become a star. And um, I just hopped in the car to be on the game show, and I drove all the way over here. And on my way here, my car blew up in uh, the Rocky Mountains, and I was like, "Fuck my life!" I drove two thousand five hundred fucking miles. I'm at the top of the goddamn mountain, and then the car blows up. And then I realized I'm on the top of the mountain, right? Right. All I gotta do is glide all the way down. <laughs> So I put it all the way down that mountain to Los Angeles, and I pulled up at Debbie Reynolds' studio on Lancashire Boulevard at 4 o'clock on Wednesday with my rock and roll pumpkin head on. And I said, rock and roll pumpkin, say it again! That's amazing. And they put me on the show. So did, did you they make immediately it? gonged him. And they immediately gonged me. <laughs> but you made it on the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. My, my goal was to have proof that I did, in fact, own the world's worst band. And I could only <laughs> prove that by being gonged on national television years and years before my success. Yep. Yeah, It's on YouTube. You so, can find it on YouTube. Okay, so that's actually on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's all, the, that's all the proof you needed. That's it. So, so 10 years later, in, in 1997, when somebody says, I got the worst band in the world. Say, oh, no, you don't. Yeah. I got a tape from the Gong Show in 1987. Proves you wrong. So what happened after the Gong Show appearance? Well, uh, the car was blown up, so I couldn't go back home. And uh, that was a predicament. Tends to be. So... Uh, I lived underneath my friend's uh, dining room table. I went and bought a sheet. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to move out of the living room. So, yeah. uh, so then you know. Yeah, yeah we know. You know, we know how it is. This is. Yep. I went and bought a queen-size sheet, and I put it over the dining room table, and I moved in. <laughs> <laughs> and they got me a job at Tower Records. And while I was at Tower Records, I'd tell my crazy story about how I'd dress up as a cow or a rock and roll pumpkin. And people would throw food at me, say that I sucked. And I drove in my car and it blew up. And I got on the gong show. And then they gonged me. And I was humiliated in front of millions of people. And they all just thought I was insane. Yeah. 
All my coworkers, because they are they all move there to, to become the uh, next Motley Crew. All poofy hair, metal band glam. Everything was crazy at the Sunset Strip, and I, and, I, and, I, and I'm talking about my cows, my cows and my <laughs> pumpkins and my pigs. So, so it's pretty much as a whack job, and, and, and I mean they were right, and, and 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 years later. One of those people I told that story to at the record store, he, he got a job at a record company. And he said, Bill, come come down to the food court at Sunset and Vine today. Uh, we're all having lunch out, out there. I'll introduce you to the president of the record company. So, oh, fuck, sure. What record company is it? Zoo Entertainment on BMG. Okay, okay and that's the label they put out the serial code. Yes. Okay. So uh, I stumbled down there. Pretend that I was walking by. Was, oh my God, Kevin Coogan, how are you? I haven't seen you since I talked to you on the phone ten minutes ago. <laughs> and I gave him a big hug, and he introduced me to Lou Molly, who was the president. He said, ah, and he's at the table eating. Ah, <laughs> Kevin tells me you got a band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the typical, you know. Let, you tell me about your band. Yeah, I right. fucking am eating my food, motherfucker. <laughs> tell me about your band, you fucking asshole. <laughs> and so I have proceeded my story of, you know, I had the worst band. I got in my car and I got on the gong show and people threw food at me and they yelled that I sucked and I dressed up as a cow. And he was amazed. <laughs> He just stopped eating. He looked at me and shit in his beard. He was just like, how much do you need to do this? <laughs> and I just fucking threw out this random number off the top of my head. I said, ah, 60,000 bucks. And I only said this because my cousin was selling her house back in Buffalo for that price. And I was just talking to my mom Sunday night about it. It was like 60 grand. He fucking flips open his wallet. was like, Right, man, speaker, a check for 60 grand. We just signed Green Jello. <laughs> so I got a record contract. I Not even record contract. I got a video contract without the record company hearing my band, seeing my band. That's unreal. And no having any sort of information except for what I just spewed out in three seconds. So the, the pitch sold it. it instantly. It was it even? And I walked away with sixty fucking thousand dollars. I'm working seven dollar an hour job. Jeez. Bringing home two hundred and forty dollars a week. Yeah. That's incredible. Thousand dollars a month. And suddenly I got fucking sixty months in advance paid in my fucking hand. And I show my roommate, I said, dude, look at this fucking jacket. He's like, oh, shit. So I'm going to fucking start a band, man. Adam, let's fucking start a band. <laughs> and Adam goes, all right, Maynard, let's start a band. Oh. So what are we going to call? We'll call it Tool. And I said, all right, I'll throw a party Friday night. You guys can play the party, and you'll get signed, too. You said Adam and Maynard. Yes. So, those so are they threw together this band real fast. I don't mind. I go cash my sixty thousand dollar check or fucking piles of money. We're like, Woo, money, money. We buy all this beer. Tell all our friends to come over. And the record company shows up and and then they go back to work on Monday. And said, uh, Bill, Bill's roommate has a great band. You should sign them. <laughs> so all of a sudden, within a, a, a fucking a few weeks time. Yeah, there's this house that, that was making minimum fucking wage, uh, eating ramen noodles, scraping fucking pennies together to go buy some fucking day-old bread. And, and now we got $360,000. Wow. So what do we do? We set the fucking house on fire. <laughs> For real? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, we kick out the neighbors and we take over their spot and then we take all their stuff and we smash it and we throw it in a big pile and then we set it on fire. And then the police came over, so we had to piss on it to put it out and 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 and, and, and then they left. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, because I knew the I, I knew the tool And now they all own giant mansions. That's crazy. because yeah, I, I knew the tool correlation, but I didn't know you were those were your roommates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just all living together. And doing nothing. Well, not nothing, but, you know, 
Living in Hollywood. Yeah, it's struggling. Uh, pursuing getting our by. Getting pursuing by. our dreams and ambitions yeah. and hopes, and trying to live to our full potential every day. That's amazing. And and so because of they, the record company came to the party. Yes. And saw Tool play. Oh yes. And and that was what got Tool on. Oh yeah, first time they play. That was the first their first gig they got. Their signed. first gig they got signed. <laughs> No, that, that was, and I didn't even have a gig, and I got signed. That's fucking amazing. I was yeah. the right guy at the right time. You know, a, a person that was a visionary that uh, believed in you know our, our ideas. 